this, I want to talk about this. This is, um, I was trying to think of like how to, how to kind of introduce this, um, this debate. Let's just say that not really a debate, but this was something that, that, that caught headlines all over social media. And I wanted to talk about it. So Dr. I'm not even why I call him doctor. I don't think he even is a doctor. I'm just going to call him this Dr. Omar Johnson. Uh, said something that that caused waves in hip hop about Eminem. As usual, Eminem gets brought up in random fucking conversations that got nothing to do with him, and he gets attacked. This is Lowen's. I mean, this is Eminem's career for the past ten years. I want to say, in terms of like, you know, social media and shit, he just randomly gets brought up and gets attacked. So let's go over the article. Eminem's place among the all time grapes, greats, grapes, greats in a prep. Why can't I talk right now? In a predominantly black culture continues to be challenged, this time by controversial activist and motivational speaker, Dr. Omar. Clips from an upcoming episode of the Joe Budden podcast featuring the internet personality have been making the rounds online, among which is a race-centered critique of Detroit rappers' status in hip-hop. <laughs> this thing is, uh, first off, he Dr. Omar, is, is a he knows how to get people talk, and he knows how to get himself turned to a meme. I don't take a lot of what he says serious. A lot of the stuff he says is baseless. And quite frankly, a lot of it is direct and just stupid. You know, like a lot of what he says. Now, there are some things that he says. That, here's the thing, though, with anybody, and I say this with anybody, including me and anybody else in the media world or in the whatever, interviews, whatever that you, you see speaking, any celebrity, any, not that I consider myself a celebrity or any of that. I'm just saying like anybody that you hear speak on things that you listen to and watch. Do, you you should not agree with them 100% with anybody. Never. You should always have things that you do not agree with with that person. If you agree with somebody 100%, that is not healthy. I say that to say there are some things that Dr. Amar says that I watched interviews from that I agree with. There's been quite a few things here and there. I can't think off the top of my head, but there's a lot of things that he said that I was like, okay, that makes sense. I agree with that, that this should happen. But this makes no sense, and here's why. There's been quite a few examples on social media. One is Tiger Woods, right? Black and a predominantly white sport, golf, white sport. He's hailed as one of the best. That's like one of the examples. My example that I think is the best and the most interesting is Gordon Ramsay. He is considered by, I would say, most of the world the best chef to, uh, chef in the world. He's at least the most recognized chef. Chef. Why am I saying chef? Jeez, today I cannot speak. I apologize, guys. The most recognized chef in the world. On top of that, he is super talented. He knows every culture of food. Trust me, I, I am a Gordon Ramsay fanatic. That's a fact you don't know about me. I've seen every TV show, every program. I've watched every interview. I've damn near read every book. This guy knows every culture and their food. And I bet you if he went to certain cultures, they would call him the best at that. Regardless of him being white from the UK, not of that culture, they would call him that. And he's been called that by a lot of different places from different cultures. Because he's just that good. It's got nothing to do with white skin. It's got nothing to do with culture. It's got nothing to do with any of that shit. Eminem. If you don't consider him the best, he's at least top five. He should be in your guy in anybody's list because he's done that much. And Dr. Omar mentions, oh, why is he building a school? He's not helping the community. So if he started doing that, all of a sudden he's, 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 he's you know, he's, he's, he's the goat. Is that what he has to do to be the goat? That makes absolutely no sense. And then Omar mentioned something about uh, Kobe Bryant's wife. Uh, Vanessa not donating Kobe, Kobe's money to black communities. Like, what the fuck is Omar talking about? This guy is completely lost his mind in this stuff. Like, who are you to speak on somebody else's money and what they should do with it? Mind you, Omar is somebody that accepted donations from random people and promised he would build a school and has never delivered on that. And he has so many other things in his personal life that are wrong, but I'm not here to attack people's personal lives because that's not... Anybody with respect shouldn't do that. So the fact that, you know, there's a Marshall Mathers Foundation in Detroit and in, 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 uh, in Michigan where, you know, everybody of all communities benefit from. 
Now is Eminem the 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 number one guy to help the black community? No, I mean he's he's put on a lot of black people. That's the reality of it. When when black people were blackballing Fifty Cent, Eminem stepped in and said, "No, I'm gonna take take on this problem and I'm gonna put him on." That's like the biggest example. Obviously, he's done a lot of different things with different artists. D12, all these other different artists that he's tried to put on. Put, you know, in 8 Mile movies, he's put on people locally from Detroit that he didn't have to do. Eminem, here's the thing. I don't like that Eminem catches these strays because Eminem is probably the most respectful of hip-hop culture. When he had his Hall of Fame speaker, he, he mentioned everybody before him and gave them props, even though some of those people on that list were disrespecting him. He still gave them props. Eminem respects the hip hop art form, has always respected it, and has never steered away from it. That's the number one thing. There are a lot of artists who are culture vultures who have just taken hip hop at that moment to use it to benefit their career and then gone on and done something else. There have been a lot of artists that are white that do that. Why don't they get attacked? Because Eminem is one of the best, biggest, globally known, most sales, all that. We don't attack Post Malone for jumping into hip hop blowing up off a of hip-hop sound, going into a completely different sound. We don't attack Miley Cyrus for at one point becoming this hip-hop pop star with Mike Will made it and all this stuff, and then all of a sudden leaving it and abandoning it and never caring about it. We don't attack a lot of artists that do this shit day in and day out. Eminem stays true to hip-hop and its art form and respects everybody that came before him and even after him, even though he's got critiques of different that, he doesn't care. He's still respectful. So why does Eminem get to catch these strays? Because he's one of the best to ever do it, and it's unfortunate that his skin color gets mentioned in this situation because skin color or not, it's the dumbest argument ever because if skin color played a role in Eminem being big, then why wasn't these other white rappers as big? Tell me, where where are the, all these other white rappers that are supposed to be huge? Where's Paul Wall? No disrespect to Paul Wall because he has his own talent and his own ability. I fuck with Paul Wall heavy. But he never reached that that peak of Eminem. There's a lot of white rappers that never did. Mac Miller would have could have been there. I think Mac Miller had had the ability to be there, but he passed away unfortunately. Mac Miller was one of those that could have and respected the art form of hip hop, and he could have got up a lot higher. Now, could he get up to Eminem's level? Probably not, because in today's time, it's really hard to reach that type of level, especially in the social media era. But he would have been one of those very well respected white rappers that people would have looked at and been like, okay. You know he's got it. He's one of those that can that can that can do his thing in hip hop. Um, I you know, Omar's got his own takes on things, but that that whole theory of because you're white you can't be one of the best in a predominantly black culture makes absolutely no sense. Considering there are a lot of examples opposite, um, I just can't think off the top of my head, man. The Gordon Ramsay thing to me is the best example because he's gone to different cultures, critiqued. Their food and their culture and how they make their food and made it better. I've seen it on TV. Like you can watch. I I don't know if Kitchen Nightmares is a good example, but Kitchen Nightmares is one of them where he'll 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 say this is not how you make hummus. This hummus is oily and disgusting, and you should make it like this and this. And he critiques him. He tells him. And this is a guy that's not. Do you think they say those people that are making the hummus? Do you think they say, "Oh, you're a man from the UK. You're white. You don't know our culture. You don't know how this food's made." No. Now there are sometimes people say that, but they know they're wrong. They know they're wrong when they say that. So, you know that whole example. You know Joe Bun know what he Joe Bun knows what he did when he mentioned him. He knew it was going to catch headlines. He knew Omar was going to go in and attack. So Joe Bun smart smart marketing on his end. I think stupid. It's a stupid point to make. There are a lot of different people in different cultures dominate doing their thing. Now, if Eminem was disrespecting hip hop, then you have a right to critique him and do all these things and say, why is he helping this community? This, this, this. Reality is, you don't know what Eminem is doing with his money, Omar. We don't know what you're doing with your money because you haven't built a school. So you don't know what Eminem is doing with his money. How do we n- not know that Eminem is donating? To minorities or doing whatever with his money. You don't know. That guy never spends money on fancy things. I never see that guy with, with you know, a Ferrari. I've never seen him pull up in a Ferrari. You know, I could be wrong, but I've never seen him with fancy things, dude. He's a regular guy, wears regular things. Um, who? How do you not, like, how do you know what he's doing with his money? He could be donating to help and all kinds of people behind the scenes. Maybe he just doesn't want to make it public and let everybody know. That's his business. So... At the end of the day, dumb, dumb conversation. I don't understand the whole Eminem white 
yeah, did, uh, did the whiteness play a bit of a role? Yes. But at the end of the day, is that the reason why he's one of the best-selling artists in hip-hop, if not the best-selling, the best-selling artist in hip-hop? Is that the main reason? No, because there are a lot of white rappers that came, and they didn't become as dominant. They didn't do as great. I, I'm not, but what's the excuse for that? Oh, oh, Dr. Dre came and produced Eminem. That's why. No. Dude, Timbaland. Timbaland literally signed a white artist, Bubba Sparks, who, by the way, to me was dope, signed him, tried to push him as the next big... This is Timbaland, one of the dopest hip-hop producers of all time. Signed a white artist, tried to push him with that cosign, and he didn't blow up to the level of Eminem. That tells you right there. So when people throw that Dr. Dre thing, if it wasn't for Dr. Dre, Eminem, no, no. No, 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 because there's a perfect example of Bubba Sparks trying to blow up as big as Eminem through Timbaland producing, and it never happened. Now, Bubba Sparks got big. Booty, 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 rocking everywhere, and all these other records that he has that I enjoyed. I think he's talented as fuck, too. I like Bubba Sparks, but he never reached that Eminem level. He got compared to Eminem, but nah, Eminem is Eminem. You can't, you can't put in the brain of another white rapper Stan those storytelling records, Mockingbird, and all these records, and all the experience he's had. You can't drill that and stuff. No matter what producer you have, you can't get that out of another. That's Eminem. That's just how talented he is. That has nothing to do with his skin color. So, yeah, just interesting. Interesting, you know, thing that I always see with Eminem. It's always about skin color. I know Eminem is going to respond to this shit. You know, he's probably going to clown Omar for not actually building that school that he took donations from. I can't believe... I, dude, I can't sleep. I would never be able to sleep at night taking donations from people and promising to deliver on something and not doing it. I just couldn't do it. On Patreon, I still have gifts I have to give people from the Give It Your Die Trying document that came out in June that I still haven't delivered. And I have trouble. That's in my back of my mind every single day. I haven't found that fucking teddy bear. I think I even lost the Iron Man shit that I had that as a giveaway. So I need to figure that out in January. I promise you guys I will do that. But that's that's bothering me. Those are four gifts to four random people that I'm supposed to give out. $3 donations that people give me on Patreon. If I, 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 I need to give more of a value on Patreon because I feel guilty just for that. I couldn't imagine taking money from people. That's like me asking you guys to donate to me, right? I go on YouTube Live. I say, give me donations, guys. I'm trying to make this documentary Um uh, I need this money to make this documentary, right? And I tell you guys the whole plan. I say, listen, this is a, doc, a G-Unit documentary. I want to get game. I want to get banks, all this. I need $100,000 to make this documentary. Please donate for me. I get on live. I ask for donations. I say, I'm going to get it done. I have the money, $100,000. I got it. I'm going to do the doc, documentary. 10 years goes by, no documentary, nothing. I, 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 you know, you guys would one. Fucking, you guys should never support me after that ever again, obviously, because I just stole your money for no reason. Uh, and somehow, Omar still has supporters, people that donated him. He doesn't figure out the school situation, took money from people. The report is about $2 million, and there's been no school. Uh, the person that lives next to school said there's been no renovations, nothing. Nothing that Omar said he was going to do, did not do. He just took the money. So he needs to get critiques for that. He needs to look at the, I, I always, there's a quote. That I forget what the quote said exactly, but the the people that do the most critiquing usually have the most that's worse about them that are hiding things. Because if you're constantly pointing your fingers at people, and this applies a lot to, I noticed this um, in the Muslim, you know, uh, religion. I'm Muslim, so I I notice this a lot. I see this a lot. When I, when somebody new converts to being a Muslim, they get critiqued by those strict Muslims. Oh, you're converting to, to to being a Muslim, but you have tattoos. Oh, you drink alcohol. All this, all this, all that. And they just shame, shame, shame you. But those people that constantly shame, they probably got the darkest skeletons in their closet. Because the people that don't do bad things and that that know that life is, you know, ups, downs, all kinds of random things, they, they don't critique. They don't care. They just know that you're trying to go on the right path. And that's all that matters. Those people that constantly point fingers and critique, they usually have the worst skeletons in their closet and i think omar is a perfect example of that i think over time there's gonna be information that comes out about him more and more that shows that he was critiquing all these people of all dude you're mess you're met you're mentioning kobe bryant's widow 
and talking about her money and how she should spend her dead husband's money. Are you out your fucking mind? The, uh, the utter disrespect that is. So, yeah. Uh, wild, man. I, I'm just mind blown. I, sometimes I don't even know what the fuck to say because to me it's just like, it's so disrespectful. The, especially the Kobe Bryant thing. Like the Eminem thing, okay, whatever. You, you, don't, you don't think he's the best because he's, you can't name him one, the best or one of the best because he's white. Whatever, that's your take. It's a dumb take. It's a very ignorant and stupid take. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, Eminem is definitely up there. You know, I think he should be top 10 of everybody's list. That's just my opinion. Now, as people are going to say, I don't fuck with Eminem. I don't listen to his music. I don't vibe to it. He only has a few great songs. That's it. Hey, that's your opinion. I respect. I respect everybody's opinion. Hey, if you think he shouldn't be white because he's... He shouldn't be white. If you think he shouldn't be the best or one of the best because he's white, okay, that's your opinion. It's a stupid one. It's an ignorant one. But, you know, hey, everybody's got their own take. Omar, please check your backyard before you're out here, you know, critiquing everybody else's lawn. Make sure your backyard is good because you're over here pointing fingers at people and saying what they should do with their money and their their influence and their donations, but you never built that school. Mind you, you probably could have done 90 million other good things. But, you know, when you're talking like this, people are only going to focus on the bad. So, yeah, 